If you want a portable antenna for QRP, then there's a few things you really want in it. For instance, it needs to be fairly light. An antenna that uses a lot of poles can be quite difficult to carry, especially if you're just walking or on a bike. So if you can get an antenna down to one pole, then that's a big advantage. Another thing is you want it really quick to put up. Especially if you're only operating portable for an hour or so, or there's a possibility of a thunderstorm, rain or other change in weather. You don't want to take half an hour or an hour to put an antenna down after you've finished operating. Now, I've talked about various antennas in previous videos on my website and in my books, but one I want to talk about in a bit more detail is a very simple one I commonly use. It's my go-to antenna for portable QRP, and that's just an end-fed wire about 20, maybe 21 meters long. Not critical. You do need an antenna coupler, or at least I use an antenna coupler, and that allows you to compensate for small variations in length. If you use something like some people use balloons, that sort of thing, then you need to trim the antenna a bit more critically. But especially if you're operating in different locations, you might have the antenna at different angles, depending on where you've got anchoring points. The environment around you might be different. Ground conditions might be different. I prefer just to have a length, approximately whatever it needs to be, and then have an antenna coupler to tune out any mismatches. And the benefit of that as well is it gives you operation on multiple bands. Something like a NFED half wavelength on 7 MHz is a full wavelength on 14 MHz. And on 10 MHz it's about two thirds, three quarters of wavelength, something like that. So an intermediate value there. Anyway, I'll just show you, I've been playing around with the Managal antenna modeling software, the radiation patterns you get. First of all, on 7 MHz, the radiation pattern is like a low dipole. You've probably seen the normal figure 8 of a dipole, where it's like a figure 8 radiation pattern. Because it's low, it's much more likely to be omnidirectional. So, a good antenna for working stations all around doesn't have a particularly low angle of radiation for DX, but for middle distance type contacts of say 500,000, 1500 kilometers, then something like this is fine on seven megahertz. And on seven megahertz, they are the sort of distances you'll most likely work. When you go up to 10 megahertz, the radiation pattern changes a bit. It becomes a bit more broadside to the wire and that can have an advantage. And 14 megahertz, it becomes even more pronounced, much more, a bit more like a figure eight type thing, but not quite in at the sides. So your front to side rejection might be, I don't know, maybe 6 dB, 10 dB, relatively small compared with a lot of other antennas. Anyway, with that sort of thing, it's still worth orienting your antenna to favor a desired direction. If you're only operating for say two or three hours, you might be aiming to work a particular path. Um, for instance, for us here in Australia, very commonly, very popular is late afternoons, Europe long path. So you'd set up the orientation of the antenna so it favors that. And the 20 meters of wire I normally use, I set it up, well, there's different ways of setting it up. You've seen previous videos where I've talked about setting it up as a half square. That's where you have about a quarter wavelength up, half wavelength across, 
and a quarter wavelength down. A half square is a good antenna for low angle radiation, a good DX performer. It's bi-directional, giving you a angle radiation that way and that way as well. So quite a good antenna for one wavelength of wire and quite simple to put up. But it does require two poles. One thing that, of course, that might be a problem in some cases, if you can take one pole instead of two, that saves a bit of space. In which case, instead of it being a half square, then you just have it like an infed inverted V. So your single pole in the middle where it's high, and then at the end, one end you tie off to something, maybe even your bike. If maybe there's a tuft of grass or a tree, something like that. Um, anyway, doesn't need to be very high up off the ground. Then at the other end you have your antenna coupler and transceiver and your operating positions. With that antenna, it's simpler to put up as it's one pole instead of two. It's also easier because with one pole you might not have to hammer a stake into the ground. Um, there might be a fence post or something like that that you can just tie your pole to. Anyway, with that antenna, you still get a bit of gain broadside. This is, I'm now talking about one wavelength of wire, so about 20 meters of wire using it on 14 megahertz. Bit of gain broadside. And surprisingly, it's almost as good as the half square. And you're only using one pole instead of two. So that may be an advantage in a lot of cases for casual portable operating. have a lot of time to operate. Uh, the band conditions didn't seem to be particularly good. Didn't work anyone on 20 meters, but I did on 30 meters. Thank <laughs> you. 
For more on portable antennas, don't forget my books. Two of them, hand-carried QRP antennas and more hand-carried QRP antennas. You can find out more about them on my website, vk3ye.com, or search their titles on Amazon. There's other books as well, particularly if you're getting started in amateur radio, or want to know more about operating and equipment for low power or QRP amateur radio. Again, vk3ye.com, or like VK3YE Radio Books on Facebook.